Welcome back. You're watching Political Exchange, where we continue our discussion with Planning Minister Trevor Manuel. Minister Manuel, a third element of the plan is, of course, the development of what you've termed a capable and developmental state. Um, now, those words might seem innocuous to many people, but I, I'm, I'm sure it was carefully chosen. Take us through a capable and development state. What are the elements of such a state, and do we have it at the moment? The short answer to your last question is no, we don't believe we have it. A developmental state is one that uh, chooses, that identifies where it needs to, to, to support activities and then is held to account for how it supports activities. So in education we clearly have a crisis, we need a different output. A developmental state will deal with the problem, will identify it, and sometimes developmental states are pretty forceful. If you look at uh, world history, developmental states frequently are actually not highly democratic states. Yeah, quite top down. Uh, they, they act because they must act in the interest of a particular set of outcomes. Um, so that's one side of it. We, we will operate a developmental uh, focus state in the context of our constitution, which is of course uh, uh, very, very, it sets a basis for high levels of accountability, if you wish. On, account of, uh, on the, the, the capable state, we're saying that we need to retool the public service. The idea that I know somebody and I can bring them in uh, uh, without them having to pass uh, any test uh, has to end. We must ensure that we bring capable people in, that the public service becomes uh, a career of choice that people actually desire to get there, that they trained through school and post-school, that they might even have to write an examination to get in. We also uh, make a proposal that once in the public service there should be uh, some measure of, of protection from political interference and this is not to suggest for a moment that uh, the public service doesn't have a political role to fulfill but uh, political interference sometimes comes in the form of uh, ministers or members of the executive council or mayors saying you will appoint the following individuals don't ask any questions or Thou shalt award a tender in a particular way. We need to deal with those kinds of issues very, very strongly, very differently. We also are making a proposal that there should be a head of the public service, uh, an identifiable individual very close to the head of state and somebody who is seen to manage the competence of administration which is different from uh, policy implementation. If we don't have competent administration, there's nothing left. And I think you can look at uh, issues such as the Auditor General's reports uh, to understand just where uh, some of the administrative breakdowns are. But uh, financial reports are not the entire story. We need to also develop uh, norms and standards for non-financial -finan measurement. What has the money bought is a question that a competent administration must be able to answer to itself, to its legislatures, but also uh, to its broader electorate. Mm -hmm. Minister, one of the issues that we have in South Africa is the absence of a professional class of civil servants. We know in other countries, over decades, it is developed. Um, I'm sure your report has looked at best practices everywhere you know, in the world. What do we have to do and does the plan speak specifically to how to go about creating this professional class? We know that we need more competent people in, but you are quite critical of the fact that the state doesn't have a vision for the future of, of public servants. How do we go about creating such a vision and where does it start? You know, having been in government uh, for, for over 18 years, I, I actually have experienced a great deal of competence amongst public servants. Uh, so I don't, I mean, I can look back on the period I've served uh, in the executive, and I know that they are competent people depending on how you structure the systems. And we must ensure that we can so structure the systems that uh, we, we, we take out the whim and caprice of individuals, especially in the executive. <laughs> One of the issues that, that, that uh, we've actually uh, uh, tripped over in, in the course of our examination now is that <clears throat> there's a difference between 
uh, two pieces of legislation. The one is the Public Finance Management Act, which holds the uh, Director General or HOD as the accountable officer, accountable for all manner of things. And the other is the Public Service Act, which gives the authority to employ people to a minister. Now, a minister can go into a department and employ all manner of people without having to refer it to the Director General. There's something fundamentally wrong because when money is spent on the salaries of those individuals, it's the Director General who has to account to Parliament. You've got to restructure the alignment between those two pieces of legislation so that um, the employment of people, for example, is not something uh, vested with a minister and then handed to a director general by way of delegations because if the delegations aren't there then you're going to get wrong kind of behavior. I'm not suggesting that uh, directors general or HODs in general are, 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 are angels uh, above reproach but I think we must so construct the system to strengthen the accountability framework and this is going to be a, an important part of it. So the rules for recruitment, for training, both on-the-job training and, and skills upgrades within the public service, uh, the constant uh, uh, evaluation of, of, of performance uh, without it being too administratively burdensome, these are all going to be parts of, of retooling the public service in this country. Mm -hmm. It is true that uh, uh, in 1994, jobs in the public service were, were highly sought after because relative to what a large cadre of people did, uh, these were very highly remunerative. But when one looks at how private sector salaries have accelerated now, um, uh, you know, we, we haven't demonstrated the ability to retain a public service based on their commitment to service. Uh, and, and that is one of the issues that we need to deal with in the course of this. Minister, finally, the plan has now been handed over to President Jacob Zuma. It goes before Cabinet. What happens next? You know, one of the things that we will have to work through, and it's Cabinet Plus, because uh, in the discussion uh, in September there will be um, premiers and there will be um, mayors, certainly, of, of, of the metros, because uh, from the government side, all three spheres will have to be involved. The Planning Commission will also continue to talk to all manner of institutions in South Africa. Uh, we've learned to have thick skins. Uh, sometimes people are, are shouting at us and disagreeing in, in, in public, and in private the response is very different. We will continue to work. We need to ensure that there aren't impediments to progress, that institutions don't block the progress, uh, and that we can roll it out. A lot of what the plan involves is actually uh, quite experimental and it's across a very wide area of, of work. Um, so there's nothing about the plan that is actually sequential. We're not saying first fix education, then jobs, then agriculture, oh what have we done about land reform. We're saying that we need to open a number of areas uh, across a very uh, a wide pan uh, of events. So. We, we make proposals about land reform that are very interesting because we construct agency at the district level. Uh, hopefully it will all aggregate to 30% of agricultural land, but I think we will develop a different sense about why it is that land that has been restituted or redistributed actually is taken out of productive use. What is it that prevents people from, from tilling the land and ensuring that we can uh, uh, continue to, to deal with issues of an association and relationship between land and food security, for instance. These are the kinds of issues that we have to uh, unleash a lot of energy for because it's a very different approach to sitting in Tswane uh, and trying to direct everything that happens in the country. We're looking for agency that will be constructed quite differently. And that's going to be the magic. It means that we must then have accountability loops and feedback loops, and we must be able to talk about how the plan is actually being implemented with clear and uh, clearly demarcated points of big reports. I'm hoping it can be at least every six months. Well, that's where we have to leave it. Thank you, Minister Manuel, for your time. Tune in again tomorrow night for another edition of Political Exchange. I'm Karima Brown. Goodbye.